after filming and photographing some of my country's most magnificent beasts, it was time to look up into the heavens and focus my lens on a different kind of extraordinary. India is blessed with an abundance of life beyond our own kind. A kind that's free to wander past the boundaries that we've created. Adapted to almost every kind of terrain, birds are one of evolution's most impeccable creations. Their baffling migrations eliminate political borders and unify several countries and the continents. In this bird photography series, I'm going to bring you a few of these avian wonders and I'm going to get as close to them as they'll allow me. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button because we're about to become part of the flock. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence and this is the first episode of Part of the Flock. A bird photography series where I'll take you behind the scenes and show you how I photograph some of nature's most breathtaking moments. In this episode, the exotic has reached my very doorstep and I couldn't stop myself from getting front row seats. Within the last few years, lesser flamingos, the smallest species of flamingos in the world, have been migrating to my city in unfathomable numbers compared to previous decades. In 2019, there were an estimated 120,000 of them, and in 2020, those figures soar to 150,000 due to reduced human activity during the COVID pandemic. I've just driven to uh, the wetlands of Navi, Mumbai because there are several thousands of flamingos that you can find out here and um, it's been two months since I've stepped out of my house with my camera and shot any wildlife <laughs> I just had a few of them fly over me right now I think there are over a hundred thousand of these guys right here in this lake easily I'm used to traveling hundreds of miles to witness spectacles like these. So the reality of this one happening in my home city took a little while to settle in. There are several of them still joining. And this entire lake is covered in pink. It's been over two months. There are more of them landing. It's been over two months since I've stepped out of my home with my camera because of the COVID um, surge in India. We've had more than 400,000 cases per day only a few weeks ago. Travel has been somewhat uh, relaxed, so I'm out here now. Um, shooting from this angle isn't going to make sense because, oh wow, there are more of them coming. And I hope I get them behind me. Uh, they're going all the way there behind the tree. Let's follow them and see if we can get them entering from that side. There you go. They're all going to come in. They keep coming in from that side. They'll fly over here and they'll all land down right there. A lot of them are towards that boundary near the, near the road. Um, and not many of them right here. So I might have to move uh, my angle of shooting. 
their flapping is so loud that when they pass overhead you can hear them and you can hear them approaching from a distance i'm heading to a different part of the wetland now um the part that's closer to the main road because that's where all of the flamingos are and there is a minor display of courtship happening in the center that iconic courtship dance the most common of their moves includes them marching together stretching their necks high and flagging their heads from side to side everything is calm now it's midnight everybody sleeping adults in their vibrant pink plumage perform at the center stage whilst the grayish juveniles get pushed out to the peripheral boundary The construction site you see in the background was where I first arrived. I'll talk more about it later in the video. When these youngins reach 5 years of age, they too will don brightly colored feathers thanks to photosynthetic pigments in the blue-green algae that they consume. Today is more for Reki to get an understanding of uh, my angles, the locations, their behavior, the numbers, um, and more importantly, the tide. But the not so good thing is tide-wise, today is amazing, but tomorrow and the day after, it's not that great. And um, today I've got the 5D Mark IV with me, but tomorrow and the day after, I'm going to get the Sony A7S III. and i'm going to film in 4k 120 fps and get some good crispy creamy slow motion footage right behind this lake is thane creek and when the arabian sea retreats rich mud flats along navi mumbai's coasts resurface A bountiful supply of algae distributed along the shore is exactly what these flamingos have come for. But how have these birds only just discovered this haven? Well, that's because this haven is man-made. And it's no reason to celebrate. The waters of Thane Creek are filling up with pollution from nearby industries and refineries as well as untreated domestic sewage from our ever growing population. This pollution increases water temperatures propagating the growth of the same blue-green algae that these lesser flamingos consume. When the high tide returns and floods the mud flats again, the flamingos must seek shallow water to roost in. And that is when wetlands, inland water bodies such as this one, play an important role in keeping the overall ecology afloat. This lake isn't of course as expansive as the coastal mud flats. So for a joint family this large they sure must know how to be tolerant of each other's space minor tempers can fly occasionally especially amongst the restless youth i've been sitting here for a good half an hour and i'm just fortunate that it hasn't rained because that's what the uh, the forecast was everything on this side is covered in pink all the way from there to that side of me 
and flocks and flocks of them still continue to come in and land inside the water body. My recce was fantastic and I left just before it began to rain. It's day two, I've just reached Navi Mumbai and the road is blocked by that barricade you can see behind me. It was actually moved away by people yesterday. It's back in place. So we've parked the car all the way behind and now I'm approaching the rest of the distance on foot. Contrary to the weather forecast, my second day was bright and sunny. Perfect lighting conditions for slow motion footage. I've reached the lake and the flamingos are all coming in slowly. I've got the Sony A7S III with me today and I'm going to be filming in 4K 120 frames per second. And that's going to make all of the action look so cinematic. Wow, just look at these guys flying. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The lake was empty because it wasn't high tide as yet. And that gave me time to set up my camera and film the flamingos arriving from Thane Creek. This arriving batch doesn't even make up 1% of the actual flamingos around me. The monsoons have a different type of downpour. When one batch settles, the next one arrives. These birds are displaying systematic order something that we're seeing even lesser in people. So it's about an hour since I last spoke to you guys in real time. I think it's probably longer than that. But I walked down to the spot right from the road there. I'm inside the grassy marsh. And um, I've got the Sony A7S III with the 100-400 lens and the 2X converter. And um, I've got a low base tripod here chose to wear flip-flops today because my shoes were completely soaked yesterday, shoes and my socks. My focus for the day was largely on video. Slowing time down makes you appreciate the natural world in an entirely different light. 
you notice the elegance and graceful design of nature that you otherwise normally wouldn't. A juvenile greater flamingo with a light colored beak was the only one of its kind that I spotted. At nearly twice the size of its cousins, it will tower over them when it fully matures. Just when you think the lake is saturated with pink, yet even more flamingos appear from the horizon. But the urban landscape of India's financial capital is far from being a safe space. This collared street dog chases the flamingos daily, even multiple times a day. Its dormant hunting instincts could potentially be life-threatening to these birds. Free-ranging dogs aren't the only problem here. This individual frothing from its beak might hint at the possibility of contaminated water. So that's it for day two, which was pretty awesome. I was right there at the banks getting all of these thousands of guys. Uh, the courtship dance wasn't really possible today because it didn't really happen the way it did yesterday. But uh, it's time to head back. We've lost daylight. And um, I'm thinking of coming tomorrow in the morning and in the evening. I'm not sure how it's going to be in the morning. But that all depends on, on how I feel once I'm back home. If I'm up to it, then maybe I'll leave home at 5 and then uh, come in early in the morning. Today is the third day that I've arrived at the lake and uh, there's a construction site here in the background. It looks like they're building a bridge and this is how close it is to Flamingo Lake. Construction site, Flamingo Lake. The birds haven't arrived yet. But let's hope they come here soon. I am positioning myself on this side because all of the arrival is from here. And uh, today I got a wide lens with me. So I'm gonna try to get some overhead shots where they fly over my camera. Um, yesterday I was waiting there with my telephoto, but um, it's time to try a different perspective today and get some of them just sweeping over and then descending into the lake. So it looks like uh, I'm early, or rather we are early, because I have Kian with me, who, Hi, was, who was in the Amur Falcon video, if you guys remember. And if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link up here. It's going to be ab above Kian's uh, cap. <laughs> you're, point you're pointing too high. <laughs> so it looks like um, the tide is still low and uh, the birds will take a little while to come. So we're just going to roam around, see if we can find some different angles than uh, I did yesterday and the day before. I just found out from uh, the construction supervisor that they're building a jetty over here and that jetty is going to ferry passengers from this side of town, from Navi Mumbai all the way to Alibag. Amongst the different forms of pollution, noise pollution is most taken for granted. Whilst many people in India might be habituated to the sounds of construction, the flamingos arriving from the creek were constantly deflected. The small numbers that initially came had all turned around. Eventually, when the high tide leaves you with waters 
too deep to stand in, you have no choice but to brave those loud sounds in order to get to the shallow lake, free of ocean currents. I don't remember the last time I used a wide-angle lens for wildlife photography. And come to think of it, I'm not sure I actually have. But in a situation like this, it was the only way to do justice to such an enormous scale. Life is something that we tend to take for granted. But every so often, something comes along that restores the magic that it is. Life isn't just beautiful, it's glorious. I couldn't shoot any of the behind the scenes because it took a lot of time getting from there with that setup, coming here and setting up for this uh, grassy marsh. And um, in all that time, the entire lake has filled up. But these guys aren't as close as they were yesterday and the day before. And that's because of all of the people you see there behind me. A lot of, um, I mean, it's Friday evening, so. A lot of people have come in after work and they've got their families with them as well. So for this entire... Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> for day three, I used uh, the same Sony A7S III body, but I have the 200 to 600 millimeter with me. And Kian is using my 5D Mark IV and the 200 to 400. Thank you so much for letting me use it. In my entire life, I've never seen so many birds in one place and it just doesn't feel like Bombay at all. It doesn't feel like Bombay because the sheer number of birds here and the amount of beauty that's present in here, I've never seen such a thing in my life. And the fact that, you know, it's in the midst of a metropolitan city like Mumbai, it's shocking. We must really learn to value it. So that's it for day one with Kian and uh, day three for me. Tomorrow the tide's going to be really late so the flamingos aren't going to come in during um, shootable light. Oh God, they're still coming. Yeah, yeah they're still coming. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got an infinite amount of flamingos and it's only getting more and more infinite. Let me see if I can get this for you. There you can see the entire sky there filling up with them again. I stayed back after dark to see if I could capture a more unique perspective. I played around with a few time lapses and then I saw an airplane coming in for a landing at Mumbai airport. I stopped the time lapse immediately and dialed in a 30 second exposure. To the naked eye, this is how dark the scene actually looked.
Thanks to long exposure photography, the light pollution spilling from the street lights illuminated my image. I got the shots I wanted and the mosquitoes got me. On day 4, I visited the lake early in the morning to see what the activity was like. Okay, well the road is still blocked, so we're going to have to park and walk all the way there. So it's 6 in the morning. I have reached a little later than I wanted to. And the sun is behind me. It's the opposite side now. I heard that um, evening light is much better from someone who was shooting here in the morning. But I'm only going to find out once I'm actually there. Might have to change angles to accommodate for the morning light. It stopped raining and um, I'm going to miss my uh, high speed shots with raindrops. But what's going to be more disappointing is if the flamingos aren't here and it kind of looks like they're not here. Oh man, the lake is empty. The lake is completely empty. There's nothing there. Uh, for me to film or photograph. And I've walked a fair bit forward and it looks like there is a small flock here. And we do have some more arrivals coming in. Looks like we have around a um, hundred of these guys. But even a hundred of them in such a big lake makes their numbers seem very scanty and fragmented compared to the hundred thousand that we saw. Oh wow, more of them are landing. So it looks like a good sign. At least my morning isn't wasted. And to be honest, no morning or day is ever wasted because you learn something new every time you're out in the field. And it's important to spend that time understanding behavior, noticing patterns and figuring out what best suits your uh, um, photography requirements. There they are in the background. These guys just landed and those guys have been there. There are more of them landing. So that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, I haven't been able to show you the path that I've been taking when I go down, but this is it. Sort of get over here, over the barricade, navigate through the pile of rubble, and then go down. Wow, that is fantastic. The rain seems to have flooded the area that I was shooting from. So that grassy patch there is where I was lying down the last time. But it's got water all over. So let's go down. After seeing the lake filled up to the brim, it was so strange to see it this empty. The route I've been taking to go down to my shooting spot is covered with broken tiles, bricks and other construction rubble that builders have mindlessly discarded. Inland water bodies are unfortunately used as carpets to sweep trash underneath. Hopefully, migrations like these can change how some of us view wetlands. I've just reached the rock that I've been sitting on and I'm just gonna wait now till more of them arrive. I 
we've set uh, the A7S III on a time lapse. I'm shooting eight frames per second. And we've got a decent amount of clouds in the sky. And the numbers of flamingos are also increasing. But they're more towards that corner of the lake right now. And I'm hoping as uh, time goes by, this area also gets filled up a little more. Two landing there, four more about to land. And they circle and they descend. And when they're at a comfortable height after circling, that's when they land. As they spread out closer towards me, I got to experiment with dark backgrounds and create moody imagery. I also got the opportunity to focus on close-up shots of the landing and appreciate just how breathtaking every single individual is. something began to scare the flamingos away. The same collared dog had returned. It burst into attack mode on the unsuspecting flamingos. With the lake getting deeper towards the middle, the dog had no choice but to retreat. I called out to it and tried to hold it back. But that was only temporary. Its ingrained desire to chase was difficult to restrain. On my last visit to Navi Mumbai, I saw a near lifeless flamingo in the lake. Today is day five for me and um, I'm at the wetland. What I've noticed is a struggling flamingo that looks like it's almost going and I'm gonna try walking towards it right now. The sooner I get to it, the faster I can get its neck at least above the water. So it can breathe. In the meanwhile, Kian, who had joined me once again, was trying to reach out to wildlife rescue services. By the time we got through to them, it was a little too late. I placed the carcass of the bird near a broken piece of toiletware that I also retrieved from the water. This is the current condition 
of India's wetlands. Ironically, this final visit that Kian and I made was to take out whatever little garbage we could from the lake. The, I'm not sure if you guys can read that, but here's some Amazon packaging. Oh man. Beer bottles, CDs, food and drink packaging, thermocol, clothing, various types of plastics and several other items were dumped here. I suddenly recalled spotting a few limping flamingos over my last couple of visits. It had then struck me that their leg injuries could have possibly been due to landing collisions with other construction rubble submerged in the water. In case you happen to be a nature and wildlife photographer, try carrying at least one disposal bag on your photography trips so you can take away a tiny bit of the waste and dispose of it when you're back home. This trash is better off ending up in a landfill than inside wild spaces. And you're not just keeping the environment clean, but more importantly, you're safeguarding several birds and animals from life-threatening issues. When I first started photographing wildlife, I was never really into bird photography. I was all about mammals and I embarrassingly never even took the initiative to understand why people went bird watching. But thankfully, the first wave of the COVID pandemic changed all of that. The travel ban had me going to my rooftop for photography and I slowly began to discover the true magnificence of the avian world. From rooftop birding to locations far from home, I've experienced some of the most incredible moments that have taken my breath away. Part of the flock isn't just a series about photographing birds up close. It's a series about spending time with them, understanding what their lives are like, and truly being able to appreciate them. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Your support will help me continue to tell stories of the wild and connect even more people with the natural world. I'll see you in the second episode.